My name is Anthony Smith. One of the things in, in, in the larger political narrative and popular culture, people just talk about the middle class. Very rarely do you see in mainstream political discourse or popular culture, TV shows, and the underclass, people don't talk about it. I was reading a, an article the other day that was talking about how um, there are certain countries in particular, like the UK, that are surpassing America is in, the, in the world, in, in, in the area of social mobility and how in America, social mobility is becoming, we're coming down the list. We're in a situation where, uh, not only just along the lines of race, but also class, where quite frankly, we could become a society where we have a permanent underclass. Uh, and a part of that, there is a, a racial narrative, a part of that as well. So along with that, you know, struggling school systems, uh, lack of funds, uh, the certain narrative is playing out in uh, poor environments or poor urban environments. People, quite frankly, are being left behind. People are trying to turn the tide with that, with conversations about STEM, curriculum, you know, science, technology, math, these kind of things. While we can do those things, uh, if we don't actually address the underlying racial tensions, the stories and the narratives underlying that stuff, why do we have pockets of our urban Right. Why did these come into existence in the first place? We don't have these very real conversations. And how Christianity played a part in that. Right. What is it about American cosmology, the cosmology of the American experiment? America was founded on violence, racial violence, even from the colonies, even from the, the age of exploration. Our national anthem is the scene from a map. So, there are tensions, and I think the underlying that tension is this narrative of violence that it's just a part of the DNA of American society. We live on violence, we survive on violence. There's a great book that came out uh, by a professor, he just won the Nobel Prize, and I want to say his name is Stiglitz, he wrote a book about inequality. He's talking about this growing wealth divide uh, within American society and how it's disproportionately among uh, people of color. So as you push people to the side, mm -hmm. and then you had this other narrative, religious narrative, troubled by Christians, talking about going back to some kind of pristine American society, some golden age of Christianity, you know, when we exterminated Native Americans, uh, uh, forcibly removed Africans from, or not always forcibly removed, but in many cases forcibly removed Africans and brought them here, treated women as property, treated children, as, as cheap labor. There, there's a certain uh, lie that we tell ourselves as Christians about this country. And we've got we gotta to we gotta start telling ourselves, we've got to be really truthful about what Christianity has been, the good and the bad, and you know, what it can be in this country. I can see that. I can, I can even see that in my own community. I'm seeing a lot of young black men getting caught up in a criminal justice system uh, because of criminalization of marijuana. Because marijuana is this criminalized uh, drug, you got a lot of young black men that are caught up in that. Uh, and then they get misdemeanor charges or felony charges depending upon the level of their involvement with that. By the time 18, in my community alone, if you go to Salisbury Post, uh, the Salisbury, there are, it never fails. You go to the crime page, 15 years old, 16 years old, 17 years old, got caught with possession of marijuana. That stuff stays on the record. And that limits your ability to, to uh, either go to college or to even get a decent job. You couple it with the fact that a lot of the jobs that they could get uh, are being sent overseas. And so we're in a situation that William uh, uh, Julius Wilson talked about years ago. He talks about the disappearance of jobs and the manufacturing base and things like that in certain urban centers and how it's creating a, a, a profound underclass among African Americans in urban centers. I guess the question is as a, as a person of faith, how do you how do you begin to think about that? What is it about the gospel that can address that those kinds of issues? And Jesus said it so powerfully he says, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. We gotta have communities that are not afraid to deal with the truth. As ugly as it may be.
looking at a situation where uh, there's a possibility, and some would say already exists, uh, the creation of a permanent underclass in America and the underlying racial tensions that we see in our society. The question for me that I would love to ask my friends out there is, how can you, as one who participates in a community uh, within your neighborhood or city or state, how can we become communities that are capable of telling each other the truth, the good and the bad, the beautiful and the ugly, and still remain friends uh, in that reality. I guess the question is, what can we do to become literally communities of truth that become catalysts uh, to bring about liberation uh, in our communities? How can we do this? What are the things that we can do? What are the conversations we need to have? What are the, the, the very visible practices that we need to practice in our community to become communities of truth that can deal with things like racial, underlying racial tension and the possibility of creating uh, permanent underclasses in our community?